And I'm just grateful. And this is a great opportunity because this is where I got started with John Hughes. And then we're doing a film that's not a remake, but it's a new rendition of the, of the Breakfast Club. And we've got a really talented, great young cast. So it's very exciting. You know? And it's also for charity. And I have Halloween Kills coming out soon. So a lot of good things. So I thank God. You know? yeah. great. Speaking of uh, the charity, and we are here tonight for a special friend of yours, right? So can you tell me more about the special friend? Sure. Dan Cotillion, and he's a gentleman that is unfortunately suffering with MS. And we have a great mutual friend in Sean Finnegan who helped put this together. And so Sean, uh, you know, help me organize and promote the event. And then, of course, I wanted to bring and introduce my cast to the world and my producing partners. So it all was a beautiful coming together, you know? Hell yeah, we're back. Well, we're not back, but we're figuring it out. You know what I mean there? We're, we're able to do things safely and, 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 and as a group. And I love it. I love it. I mean, I love making movies. We all get to do movies together. I can't wait till we're all back where it's just like you almost don't even think about it anymore, you know? So what initially attracted you to this script? Um, well, I mean, The Breakfast Club is, in and of itself is an iconic movie, um, and I think just like being some be, and being a part of the process to bring it into the tw into, you know to 2021, you know, into you know modern day, just you know with a a little more diverse cast and uh, some more you know grounded real issues that teenagers are facing was just really exciting to be a part of. I've also mentored kids in real life. Like I have done workshops with kids, and through songwriting, brought out their emotions and their life issues and this film really like I'm playing this teacher this drama teacher who's using art as therapy with these kids and so I really relate to it and I love how real it is and how gritty the subject matters are because kids today are dealing with very adult intense issues you know the violence that's going on in the world the chaos um, you know identity gender fluidity all kinds of issues um, abortion, I mean, it addresses everything. And it doesn't shy away from anything. And that's what I love. And I love that Anthony Michael Hall is in it in the cast of talented young actors. I knew a lot of them from their work that they had done, but the work they're doing on this movie is so inspiring. I actually was a little skeptical because, you know, this is the New Age Breakfast Club, and I didn't know how it was going to go down, but, I mean, the script was just so... You, you almost clung to it, like it just, it drew you in and it was undeniable at that point, like I had to do it, so. Yeah, um, I love Nikki actually, I was speaking with Nikki about it uh, before we read it and we were talking about how like all these kids were just going to live through something on this one day. Together they were all coming in as one people and they're all leaving as, as, as somebody else, you know, and, and it was just, it was really interesting. Um, I love I love my little character too. I feel, I, sorry, I'm gonna take it down just to like yeah no I I found that he um, I mean he was like this kind of like this like a bit of an arrogant guy you know what I mean walking around doing his stuff but then you throughout the story watching everybody get broken down he kind of gets broken down himself and and that that really warmed my heart um, and then everybody else that's going through their own things too you know it's just it's kind of cool it's like it shows a way that we all get come together and like are there for each other in a way you know. I can see your energy when you, you know, as soon as you walk on the stage. So, if you were one of the actor, uh, characters in The Breakfast Club, and which character would you choose? Because it's such an exciting, you know, film. The janitor. Judd Nelson's character, I mean. Anthony Michael Hall's character. You know who would be the most fun is the guy, the criminal. Like, the crazy one who gets to have the outbursts and the funny lines. I think I would want to do that. I mean, I kind of love Molly Ringwald's character. I love how honest she is, you know, I mean, I didn't grow up in that kind of upper class, you know, popular girl role, but I love how she, you know, really talks about how being popular is not all it's cracked up to be. Um, and she's the one to say, you know what, we're not all going to be friends after this. I just think she's, I mean, I, I think the character is amazing and what Molly did with it is, is so incredible. I always loved watching all her movies back then. And she's still working now, and she's amazing. So basically, what we heard is uh, the class is not the remake of the Breakfast Club. So can you tell us like a little bit more of the similarities and differences between those? You know, I've always been a fan of how John Hughes kind of allowed kids to kind of be themselves for the particular day. So I drew some inspiration with regard to that. So this is really uh, um, about kids having to come on a Saturday because they failed an exam. And that's why they're all actually uh, uh, having to come that particular day. 
But we're dealing with a whole new set of conflicts. I really wanted to address the diversity of uh, the world these days. And um, I think we represent uh, that way in our cast. And I really bring in a whole new set of conflicts. You know, I think back in the old days, the conflicts were kind of like parent, kid, kid, parent. And now we have a whole new set of conflicts and it's called the media and it's called the internet and it's called things like that. And I always said that's the weapon of mass destruction. So we're really dealing with how kids have to become adults while they're not even teenagers yet. How if you want to find trouble on the internet, you can. So we're really dealing with um, this kind of contemporary approach with a whole new set of real conflicts and issues that these kids are really dealing with today. But I think the theme is somewhat parallel where these kids find out that as different as they are, they all really have a very strong common denominator. And what I really found kind of true, and I think we all can, if you think about like what we all went through high school, I think those kind of feelings and in fears and emotions always translate from generation to generation. I'm just photobombing. Here's, I'm here's, just photobombing. here's one of my stars, Debbie. She's fantastic we in spoke, here. We spoke. We yeah. spoke. Uh, you go on. I just wanted to photobomb. Just well, thank to be, you. Just, you know, to be there a she rebel. Is. Thank you. Well, thank you. She is. She's fantastic. She does fantastic in, in, in the movie. So we kind of kind of navigate that kind of situation. So. That is all. Well, thank you very much. Of course. So, speaking of the diversity, uh, what are the, some of the challenges? Uh, you know, when you are going through, like, uh, when nowadays we are facing all the uh, the PC and then the woke. Uh, you know, is there any challenges for you guys to to get? We really deal also with what's going on in the world, the government, the problems with the the, the politicians, the police, the rioting things that are going in streets. We kind of deal with what's going on today and how that's really affecting these young kids. I don't think the people really realize how we're choking off these young children. They're not even prepared to deal with adolescents and we're forcing them to deal with things that are adult. So it's really showing how claustrophobic and how cut off they are and what we're really doing and what's going on in this world, how it's really affecting them. And we're seeing them really kind of torn apart about not really knowing who they are and how to modulate all these particular feelings that we're forcing them to feel. So it really is a new approach, kind of, in how these kids are really kind of structurally trying to get through their lives. This cast is amazing. We, we spend so much time on set and off set together. Um, and I think it's really going to show in the film, so that'll be really special. It's really nice. After the whole pandemic year, everyone, you know, it has been shaping everyone differently. Have you picked up any special uh, hobbies or special things that you have been doing? No, you know, I've been collecting, I'm into biking now, so I have a couple electric bikes, so my wife and I start doing that. We have a house up in Washington State when we're not in L.A., so we've been riding electric bikes, so that's a lot of fun, you know. So we hit the gym, we go swimming, we go to the beach, you know, simple things, fun. Yeah. I mean, I think we're coming to a point where, like, productions are, at the end of the day, people need to consume film and TV, and TV and film are never going to go anywhere. So now that we're, like, you know, the vaccines are out, and, you know, it's, fortunately, COVID is, you know, still going on, but it's better. Uh, you know, I think it's coming back in full force, and there's going to be so much, so much good, good content coming out in the next year, because everyone's been in their homes, writing scripts, and making good content. So I'm, I'm excited to see uh, how, how, the, how the next few years look. I'm really looking forward to see the whole film after you, you guys complete. <laughs>